Good morning. Today we're taking a look at this uh, Assemble Yourself Remote Control Robot Kit. Um, I've got it here assembled and it went together pretty well. It's a pretty cool looking mechanism. Don't mind the cat crying for attention in the background there. He's just a little bit love starved. Anyways, about this um, remote control robot. It's pretty cool, as you can no doubt tell from the photos. Um, you know, neat looking mechanism. We'll real quickly talk about the other things that come with. This is the charging cable for the battery that goes into the machine. Uh, it pulls out the bottom and I can show that to you. So it's a 3.7 volt 18650 cell with a proprietary wrap on it, it looks like, and then uh, some kind of, I don't know if that's a JST connector or what, not completely unusual. It looks like like this, you know, power source was a bit of an afterthought, the way that it fits down in there, um, but it's fine. And then you just plug this into some USB source and you can charge that up so that works that works fine uh, and then the the controller takes four double A's it didn't say on the listing on the box I think it said triple A's which is incorrect uh, in actuality four double A's to run your controller and the controller looks good from a distance it's kind of cheap and chintzy it's some hard chintzy plastic with a uh, these would be buttons for some other type of thing, but there's no there's no actual buttons or controls here. So these plates are just loosely filling in here since they don't have the buttons and they don't apply to this particular kit. Um, at least there's an attempt at labeling what some of these things do on here. That's kind of helpful. And uh, overall, the controller's okay. A bit cheap, but it's fine. Uh, should mention they give you all the tools that you need to put it together. You got this Allen wrench, uh, small flat like uh, wrench there, and this is a four-way wrench and a screwdriver. If you have your own slightly nicer, longer screwdriver, it might help, but you don't need any tools to put this together. What they give you will work. Um, so get the tools that are needed. Last but not least, there is the parts kit here for the bucket kit. You can swap out the grabber for a scooping bucket, and this is the mechanism that you would bolt on in place of this. So you can use it a couple different ways, and we'll look briefly at the instruction manual here. I thought overall this was pretty good. Um, not, not super descriptive in terms of like the English writing and things, but it is, the photos are good, they're color photos, and uh, you can pretty easily see which parts you need, what orientation they need to go, and going step by step and following through these instructions while sitting on the couch and watching TV. Uh, I want to say it took about maybe an hour to put it together, so there's the instructions are good. They're definitely um, sufficient, and I did not find any errors or, or anything as I was going along with this. So I thought, in general, you know, between being color photos, again, not a, not a ton of text description, but it was perfectly, perfectly good for figuring out what was what with this. So I'd give the instructions the thumbs up. Uh, the car itself... I think the chassis is really nice. This is all anodized aluminum, so this is really strong. This is all aluminum, this arm here. Um, the fitment and uh, machining for these is all really good. It went together really easy. I was pretty impressed, and I think uh, the overall frame design and durability is really good. Um, the wheels are really cool. I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, I believe. I've always heard these referred to as a mechanum wheel, and I don't know if that's the right 
pronunciation at all, but uh, in high school robotics, uh, we tend to call these mechanum wheels and, or mechanum or something along those lines. And these are cool on a, on a capable robot because the way these work, and you might have to Google it for yourself because it's hard for me to explain it, but the way these work is that running the motors against each other and with these being at a 45 degree angle, hypothetically, that allows this robot to drive straight sideways back and forth. I mean, it can go forward, backward, and skid steer and all those other expected motions. But the real trick of these wheels, it, it would normally be the ability to strafe. And the robot drives straight sideways without going forward or back. Uh, the reality is that... Um, those mechanum strafing movements are difficult to do if you can't ensure that all four wheels are turning the same speed. If the friction is slightly different underneath the robot or some of the rollers have some pet hair that's uh, gumming them up, um, you may not get a perfectly smooth left and right driving motion out of one like this because this uh, doesn't have... Um, like precision control, if you will, over the <laughs> over the wheels. So uh, I've gotten it to go sideways on some smooth surfaces when the rollers are completely clean, but it doesn't always work. And that would be you can see one wheels not even now they're getting up to speed. You can see how they're kind of turning against each other. If it was, if everything was perfect, that would allow the robot, as I push the stick to the left, to drive straight left. Which it can almost do. I'm on a very small table here, so I can't demonstrate that very easily. But that's the reason for the interesting design of these wheels, is that technically with the right stick going right to left, if everything is perfect, the robot will drive in this direction which is really cool and then with the left stick you get kind of a normal skid turn type of motion um, it's really fun I think they've made it maybe too fast it's faster than I thought it would be which is it's pretty fun as far as drifting and making cool you know Tokyo Drift kind of turns and stuff but it makes it difficult to control at low speed you don't you don't get much for super slow crawling ability and that is kind of a trick um again and and one other thing i should mention is there can be about a half a second of input lag from when you push forward and when it actually does something so that can make it tricky to make small motions where you want to pick something up and I should have probably had some kind of object to demonstrate. But, uh, you know, it's it's a little tricky to control and crawl at slow speed. You end up doing stuff like that very often where you can't quite uh, control it well enough to get something. <laughs> Make sure I don't drive it off the table. But... You can definitely uh, pick up stuff. I've picked up pop cans and things and driven around with this, so it's pretty cool. Putting it together is a blast. Um, the one weak point that I'm most concerned about is this connection point between these wheels and the gearboxes. It's difficult to show, but it's just one little bar of shaft of plastic going out from the gearbox to the wheel to support all the forces on this. So I'm guessing this is probably going to be a breaking point eventually, but we'll see. You can see it's a little dirty. I've been running it around the shop, driving it all around, and I uh, haven't broke anything yet, neither have any of the students. Terribly fun to put together. A really good example of an articulating arm. So... I, I think, you know, this is worth it. This is a cool kit, and uh, you'll have a lot of fun with this.